Now in this video presentation I'm going to discuss PE ratios and market to book ratios uh, or sometimes commonly uh, market to book ratios will reverse this and put it book to market so uh, it just depends you have to pay attention to how they are measuring this and I'll explain in a moment what this means. Now I'm going to go ahead and use an undisclosed publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange and I'm going to go ahead and put uh, the latest numbers I have on this company. Uh, the company's actually selling for about $24.50 a share right now, and its last earnings per share was $1.50. Now, if we take a look at this, we have the P and the E, because this is the price, or sometimes referred to as the market price. Um, and, of course, this is the earnings per share. Uh, we report those usually quarterly. Uh, that would mean that we take all the net income, uh, divide it by the shares outstanding, and we see how much each share would have paid, uh, excluding uh, any preferred shares. But uh, we'll keep that simple right now. We'll just call it earnings per share. And you can get this information just on Yahoo. Uh, click on the finance, and usually this is on the summary page. So what do we have here? Well, if I do the the math properly. Uh, I should get 16.33. So what does that mean? 150 into 2450 is 16.33. So in essence, what you are saying is you paid 16.33 times earnings. Is that good or bad? Well, it depends. Now, they say the average at any time on the S&P 500 is about 17 times earnings. So if I were to just apply this to the simple concept of 17 at times earnings or multiply this bottom number by 17, I get a number closer to $25.50. Now according to this little measure, it tells me maybe this stock at $24.50 is undervalued based on the, um, the average times earning purchased uh, in the S&P 500. A lot of times what analysts will do is they'll look for P ratios that are really low, like maybe at 12 or 11 or 10, and they'll ask themselves if the following quarter that earnings per share stays the same, could that stock be undervalued? And if you haven't figured it out, it's really based upon this number right here. Uh, there are some P ratios that will approach 100 or even over 100, and you're asking why would you purchase something for 100 times its earnings. Well, that's because the analysts expect this earnings to be much greater in the future. So when it comes right down to it, the P ratio is a good ratio, and then we do we usually can do forward ratio P ratios, but it's all based upon the earnings here. So uh, it's a good tool if you want to look for maybe possibly undervalued stocks or stocks that are growing and high growth stocks will have high P ratios. Now let's look at the other ratio we have here called the market to book or sometimes referred to as book to market. This same company, $24.50, if I take assets and I remove them, the liability, I come across the equal sign and subtract liabilities, I get owner's equity uh, on the balance sheet. If I take those owner's equity, the whole value divided by the shares outstanding, I get the book value, how much each share is worth according to the balance sheet or according to the accountants. Well, this company is worth about $12.76 currently. So you can see that the market, market price on top is greater than what the accountants feel. If I did the math correctly, they feel that it's almost twice as much, worth twice as much as the accountants feel it's worth. And basically what they're thinking is that uh, these assets are going to generate good revenues in the future. This is also a proxy for growth. So sometimes a lot of analysts will use the book to market or market to book for a growth um, measurement. If we reverse it, that means if we do the book to market, the number will be less than one. This number will be slightly over a half. So as this number climbs as compares, compared to this one, if it was reversed, you see the number gets closer to zero. So be careful. If we're using the market to book, we want a high number for growth. And if we're using the book to market, we want a lower number. And like I said, it's a more of a proxy for growth. And if you want to find this number here, again, there's a lot of places you can calculate it yourself. But again, Yahoo slash finance, go to a, the section called key statistics, and they're going to give you this number here, but they'll also give you this calculation as well. So it's up to you if you want to calculate it, go to the 10K, or if you'd just like to go to Yahoo Finance and key statistics, key statistics and find it.